How's it going, everybody? Waiting for someone to get in here so we can start. No, actually, set you down. There is one person. There we got somebody. A couple in here now. All right, so, hey man, hey sat fishing. How's everybody doing tonight? I don't know what you guys want to talk about tonight. We can talk about some football. I'm gonna be rigging up my tip ups here while we talk. Fix them up. I do that every time after I go fishing. Hey Jason Berg, how's it going? I do that every time after uh, I go fishing anyways. I, I go back through everything, make sure everything's good. I make sure the line's all wrapped tight on my tip-ups and everything. How's it going, Jacob? Yeah, anyhow, I got... I actually had to order more lights this morning. Um, these uh, Frable Arctic Fires. I didn't want to because they're kind of expensive for what they are, but I ordered six more of them this morning. You can see that one's not too bad. You can see that in the camera. Not too bad, but uh, batteries are going bad on them. And then I last week I started replacing some of the batteries and even with brand new batteries, they won't even light up. So, so uh, yeah, I had to get some more. Jacob, I got a few. How do you like them, Jacob? I like them. I think they're a little overpriced for what they are, but uh, they're pretty good light. The worst thing is I got to zip tie them onto my flag here. You can see that. I got to zip tie them on there because these snaps on here aren't worth a crap, at least on these tip-ups. I don't know if the diameter is different than uh, different tip-ups or whatever. Maybe they would snap better on a different flag, but... Uh, on here they don't. You get a flag and a lot of times that'll come shooting right off there. Several times I got up to my flag and, and uh, the light would be laying in the hole. So luckily they float. Yep, a little pricey. Yep, same same thing for me. That's what I think of them. But uh, they're a good light though, other than they fly off there. So anyhow, I gotta do that. This one ain't too bad. I'm checking all my lights on here. That's obviously working good. My uh, lighthouses, i to check the lights on them. That one's a little dim. If you guys can see that, a little bit dim. They should be a lot brighter. I'll show you here. This is a good one here. Obviously, you can, I don't know if you can see the difference very well on the camera, but. Should be a lot brighter, so I gotta fix them. I got, I think I only got a couple of them batteries left, actually. I'm gonna only be able to fix two of the lighthouses. And we'll see how many of these Arctic fires I can fix with the uh, batteries that I have. Like I said, I was replacing batteries and they still weren't turning on on some of them, so I guess we'll see what we got. You guys been out fishing lately? Been doing anything like that? If there's hunting, I think there's muzzleloader still going here in Wisconsin. There's a T zone hunt. Uh, I think that's coming up yet. What is it on the sixth or something? At least around here. I don't know about the whole state of Wisconsin. If there's a T zone hunt, you guys been fishing, hunting, doing anything like that? Coyote hunting at some point this winter. So these work anyways, there's, there's two little tiny screws on the side that hold the cap on. 
you take them out and you just replace it with uh, I don't know what they're called I think they're a 1.5 volt maybe bigger than that replace it with one of those I bought them last year so I hope they're all still good that's the thing with the uh, batteries for the the Arctic fire tip up lights too is I'm thinking maybe that it could be just bad batteries but I just ended up buying six more of them anyways waiting for good ice Jason didn't say anything the whole time deer season except for a big one I couldn't get a shot on he was sending the dough and never came out yeah that's the way it goes I think I don't know if everybody's seen that the DNR said that there was a lot more deer killed this year than there was you know in previous years especially last year or whatever but um I don't know if I believe that or not because a lot of the people I've been talking to said that there isn't they didn't see hardly anything for deer this year um, my dad included he only seen like this thing to focus he only seen like the three or four deer the whole time and three of them were spooked from another hunter and the one uh, he spooked on accident while he was going to the bathroom Anyhow, so yeah, there wasn't much for deer. You know, there's been a lot of years where my dad's killed multiple deer. Uh, I, I remember one year when I was a kid, I think he shot seven deer. And this year, he only seen four. So what does that tell you? The DNR estimates the population. But this new uh, thing where they everybody registers their deer online on the DNR website, I think it's a bunch of crap because... People go shoot deer and they never register them online. You don't have to put a tag on them. You don't have to show up to the, you know, gas stations or whatever where you registered them in past years. Now you just shoot at the deer and hold on to your tags if you want to. It, you know, it doesn't really, there's no proof that you didn't register the deer. I think it's stupid. I mean, you could, could get stopped, I suppose. Asked if you registered your deer, you say, yeah, they could probably look it up. But, but uh, you, can, you can just go cruise around with an unregistered deer now and, Nobody would think anything of it because they all look the same. I got three this week on the train. How's the fishing been? Uh, we went out. I haven't been out since the day we went last week and I uploaded the video, the dead deer video. Um, we went out that day. I haven't been out since. I think me and the wife are going to go out this Wednesday. So I'm going to try to get another video out for you guys on that. Um, but yeah, last Wednesday we caught a ton of pike. I think probably between the three of us, we caught like probably around 15 northerns last week. Um, not all of them were in the video. Uh, I didn't upload the missed tip-ups either. and I didn't upload every flag. But uh, yeah, it was a really good day. Um, actually, last week I didn't necessarily intend on catching a ton of fish anyhow. But uh I expected a couple, but I didn't expect 15 of them. So last week was a really good week. So I think me and the wife are going to go back out there on Wednesday. Oh, on Wednesday, anyhow, I always like to take her to that lake just because we always have a lot of action. And she can steal all my tip-ups. These are a 3-volt battery. That goes in here. Just snap it in there and put the cap back on. It should be good to go. Where are you guys waiting on ice at? We got like six inches up here, but um, we got a lot of snow. Well, we didn't get a lot of snow. We got like three inches the other night. I'm likely heading to Poygan this weekend for walleye. White bass and perch. Nice, good luck. Hope you catch something there. Haven't been on walleye fishing yet this year. Hope to soon though. Like I said, it's hard to get out to my good spots because there ain't enough ice to drive on yet. So I basically fish off boat landings. For the most part, I don't walk out a whole lot. I hate these little screws on here. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. They just designed these screws for me to lose them, I'm pretty sure. I want to get out and do some big pike hunting one of these days too. Hopefully 
that's a little bigger lake that I go to for that and it's a lot deeper. I haven't been out there to check the ice yet but I'm fairly confident it doesn't have a ton right now. So I gotta check that one of these days and we'll see what that's like and we'll get out there and do that too. Well here's the light. Nice and bright now. That should be nice. That's nice and bright. And what also what I also do after each trip is check my leaders. If you guys ever watched my how to rig a tip up for walleye or pike videos, you know how I rig these fluorocarbon leaders. And I always run my fingers down them a couple times, make sure I don't feel any any nicks in them. Anything like that, abrasions, anything like that. So um, I don't have any bite offs or anything like that when I'm out fishing because I absolutely hate getting my line broke. I actually use a little heavier line than what I probably should just so that doesn't happen to me. You got any football fans in here? What'd you guys think of uh, Mike McCarthy getting fired last night? Miles west of MKE. I don't know where MKE is. Milwaukee, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's further down south. You got some big pike country down there, though, I think, from what I understand, around the Madison area. Who didn't believe it? Yeah, well, I know a lot of people were calling for his head because of the play this year, but, I mean, look at the, the roster. I mean, it's nothing new. Every single year, the Packers roster is depleted with injuries. But what are we on? We, we traded away our free safety, Pro Bowl caliber. I think Pro Football Focus had him as the second best free safety in the league, only behind Earl Thomas, and he had a broken leg. So really, we had the best free safety in the league. We trade him away. And then we don't get any turnovers the rest of the year, hardly, since then. I think we've only had one since we traded away Clinton Dix. And then, uh, you know, strong safety, Kentrell Bryce, Pretty crappy to begin with. He's injured. Our defensive line, we're without Daniels and Wilkerson. We cannot stop the run to save our lives. Uh, Kevin King, he doesn't show up ever. You know, he's always injured. He's a decent player, but he, he's always injured. Uh, same with Brashad Breland. What's he played two games now? And he's been injured since when we signed him, like week four or five, it seems like. Didn't like it, but it's not... But things are, we're not going to improve. Yeah, yeah, they ain't going to get any better this year either, you know. It, a lot of people are saying to tank, and I, I almost think that's a good idea. I don't like to see the Packers lose ever, especially when they're paying tons of money and stuff, and people don't want to show up to games to watch the Packers lose. But, um, you know, the better the team, we'll get a better draft pick out of the deal. Whatever coach is going to come in, though, I think he might clean house a little bit. I'd really be surprised if Clay Matthews, Nick Perry, a lot of those people get resigned or stick around, don't get released. Blaga. A lot of those guys need to go. All right, so we got a couple tip ups here fixed already. I just fixed the one. I had a couple that I checked earlier today that were pretty good. That one's blinking pretty good. That lighthouse is good too. Can't believe Ron Zook still has a job. Yeah, me either. The worst special teams I've seen in a long time. Every week they're making mistakes. Crosby can't make a field goal, turnovers on special teams. Tremont had one against the Vikings. It's always a turnover. The whole Montgomery deal. That uh, free touchdown that the Lions got because they claimed that uh, was it Kevin King touched that punt, even though it wasn't, and they got the ball to the one yard line and got a free touchdown off the deal. The lights on here are all good. Line is wrapped not super tight, so I'm going to pull a bunch of the line off here and make sure it's wrapped up all nice and tight again. What kind of tip-ups do you guys run? Um, the one guy, Evan, he uh, I work with him. He was in the video last week with me. Well, neither of the boys have their uh, much of their own equipment. 
So uh, Evan went anyways this weekend and this past weekend and spent a, spent a bunch of money on ice fishing equipment. And um, I kind of pointed him in the direction of beaver dams because they're the best on the market. They got the smoothest pool and everything. They're a really good quality tip up. They're not quite as good as they used to be. But um, anyways, I sent him in that direction and uh, he went and bought three, three of the round beaver dam tip ups. I've never used the round ones, but I hear nothing but good things about them. Jason says, Frables and beaver dams, same as me. Yep, yep, I run, I run all Frables in my collection. Um, I have a lot of tip-ups. I think I have like 21 tip-ups, something like that. And honestly, I wish I had more because there's a lot of times I go fishing with people that don't have anything. And I always like to have more. I like to have the maximum amount of lines we could possibly have in when I go fishing. Just ups our odds. Anyways, I like these Frable tip-ups. Over a beaver dam, the only reason I don't run all beaver dams is, well, these are cheaper, which is nice. And they're a pretty good quality tip-up. The only thing, though, that really sticks out to me, why I would own these over beaver dam, is these handles here. I know beaver dam, they don't put them on there for a reason. Um, whatever that reason may be, if it messes with the way the spool turns or um, whatever. Whatever the reason is, they don't put them on. And uh, then you got to point it on it with your finger like this and spin it like that. And when you are out in the freezing cold, I hate doing that. So I buy these tip ups so I got to handle and makes things that much easier. Jason's got Frables and a couple of cheap HTs. I think the Frable has. Smoother spool than the new beaver dams. I could be. I don't know. I they they claim they got the smoothest spool, but I catch a lot of fish on these. I guess there's no way to really know. I do have beaver dams and stuff. I even got one up here on the wall behind me as decoration. Um, I do have some beaver dams, but I don't really notice a difference in the amount of fish I catch or anything between the beaver dams and the frables. So I just run all these frables. I've got like I got nine of these. Yeah, I got nine of these wooden ones, and then I got three of the Bigfoot tip-ups, which I can show you here in a second. And then I got three of the Frable Dogbone tip-ups sitting right in front of me. I can show you in a second, too. So this tip-up should be all good to go. That one's good. Yeah, variable thermal stick in a bucket. Yep. Um, yeah, they're designed to st uh, stick in a bucket. I'm not sure how many you can put in a bucket. That's one of the selling points I told them when I bought them. Like, you don't have to go worry about whatever you're gonna haul your tip ups in. Just stack them in a bucket and shouldn't have any problems with tangles or anything like that. So, anyhow, this is. Uh, Bigfoot tip up. Anyways, it's about everything about this tip up is bigger. It's got a longer base on it. It's got a longer shaft here, and the spool is a 300 yard spool. You can see all that in the video. It's a big spool on there. I always have quick strike rigs on these. I use these for my big pipe rigs. And the flag on here, yeah, this one is broken. Maybe JB weld that back in there or something. With this flag, I'll show you on a different one. This flag extends up to, uh, what is it, like 36 inches. These things haven't been opened up in a while. They uh, extend up to 36 inches. So when I'm standing next to it and I'm six foot tall, this flag is like hip hip height on me. So you can really see these things from a long distance. They uh, advertise them as a deep snow tip up too. So if you got a lot of deep snow around, I guess you can see that flag from a lot further away. Did anybody ever use those things before? 
I really like those tip-ups, but I'm the only person I I think I've ever seen use them. Have you tried the uh, Fish Pros or Automatic Fisherman? They have a game changer for me. I just need those little anti-freeze things to keep the ice from freezing the line in. No, I haven't ever used them. I've uh, seen them seen them a lot in videos and they look pretty nice. Um, I don't know what they, they uh, run in a price or anything like that, but I, I like the looks of them just because of their, you don't get any line tangle afterwards after you catch your fish. That's the main thing with why I'm fixing all these right now is just because the line gets wet, it's cold out, it freezes, then you got a kind of a messy spool and stuff and you're tang you know, fighting with a big tangled mess on the on the lake afterwards. So So that's something I don't like to deal with when I'm outside freezing cold. We all supporting each other. I built my own bite me box tip ups two years ago. Love how they keep the hole open, but uh, pain to haul. Yeah, um, I've I've uh, I've never built anything like that or anything. Um, but yeah, one of the big important aspects of how I fish, anyways, is just you know mobility and stuff like that. Not that I go around hole hopping or anything like that, but like. Sometimes if I fish by myself or, you know, whatever, you got to be able to move your equipment around pretty easily. So I'm sure you'll figure out a way to, to uh, get around pretty good with them. Let's see, did I miss any comments here? You guys get out and do any Black Friday shopping for ice fishing equipment? I don't think I bought anything ice fishing on Black Friday. I was at the store. I went to Farm and Fleet, but um, they had a lot of stuff on sale, but stuff I already had. I liked the uh, prices of the sleds and uh, Vexlars and stuff. I already have all that, though. The P1 Rocket Auger, um, seen those were a normal price of $5.50. Um, they had them on sale for $4.79, which is what I paid last year on sale, but uh, it wasn't Black Friday when I got it last year. Have you ever tried heritage tip-ups? No, I have not. I don't even know if I've ever heard of those. Thinking of getting the strike sensor. Pricey though. Ever use them? Um, strike sensor. I'm drawing a blank on that. Um, I don't know what that is. Is it similar to like the vultures or like alerts here or something? Or like the blue tips? Yes. Yeah, I actually have um, blue tips on all mine. I've never heard of the strike sensor though. Um, I know the blue tips are pretty pretty pricey, and so are the vultures. But uh, these blue tips, they're okay. Um, they're pretty expensive. I think it's like forty bucks for the two of them. Uh, I know they're getting better every year. I bought mine like three years ago, and the distance isn't that great. Um, even if you have the receiver, it's not that great. Uh, last, I, I had two receivers. I bought a brand new one last year because if you were an existing buyer, you sent them in like the serial number on the back of your receiver and they would give you a big discount on a new receiver that was advertised like, I forget what it was, 40% further distance or something like that. So I bought one and then I never even got to use it because me and my buddy were on the way out to the lake and I had my equipment in the back of his uh, trailer and we're on our way out there and the equipment blew out the trailer, lost it on the side of the road, never got to use it. So I still got my old one, but I didn't even use that last year. Um, I mainly bought them for when I was living on the lake here. And I would just sit in the house and, and uh, have tip ups in all the time. So that was pretty handy for that. Uses radio wave signals, not Bluetooth. Hmm. So it, it's probably better that uh, that strike sensor is probably a better signal than uh, Bluetooth, I would think. The Bluetooth, that, that was the thing. Like, um, 
if you have the receiver or your phone in your pocket and your body's made up of, you know, like 98% water or something like that, like your body blocks the signal and you never get the signal. That was a lot of the case what I had um, a lot of the winter. I used them almost daily and uh, it was pretty rare actually for me to get the signal to my phone. I still use them, but um, I mean, I didn't use them at all last year really, but I, I have used them since then and it's very few and far between. Like they're basically just real expensive tip up lights for me at this point. I would like to have the vultures though, you know, I, I, something like that is nice to where you don't have to crank your neck if you're looking for tip ups all the time. You don't necessarily have to pay so close to attention. Yeah, the receiver does work way better than the phone. Um, I'll say that, yeah, the, the phone, basically, if you're not within like 40, 50 yards, you ain't getting your signal, guarantee you, no matter if there's anything in between or not, especially, you know, you got snow banks and stuff, you got to have your, this is why these, this blue tip is on top here, like, the higher up this is, the better odds you are of getting the signal, and then if there's anything in between, you, you won't get the signal hardly. And then um, the receiver that they recommend that to be at least like six feet off the ground and stuff. And it's a big pain. And I think maximum I ever got on there was like hundred, hundred yards, maybe something like that. So, but they're better now. I didn't, I never did. Like I said, I never did get to use them with uh, the new stuff they came out with. Ryan says, great channel, man. I'm new to the channel. Love your videos. Thanks. I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, after the Jones X survival video, I got a lot of subscribers on here, but it seems like a lot of people have been leaving lately. They uh, must not like what I'm putting out or something. Like I said, I'm not a professional uh, YouTuber. and I'm, I put this on uh, my channel too. I made a post on there that I think I got an animal rights activist. Somebody just trolling my channel and disliking all my videos every time I post one. Like last week I made the tip up box video and somebody took their time out of their day to dislike it. Like it's a tip up box. What's there to dislike about it? It's a pretty good idea. And somebody disliked it. I don't know why. I think maybe since I made those animal rights activist videos, one of them or a couple of them hung around just to troll my channel, which whatever they got. Nothing better to do. All the power to them. The thing with animal rights activists is they never get anything accomplished. So the most they can do with their lives is just like my YouTube videos, I guess. Let's see. We had a group of buddies. The receiver would go off five to 10 seconds faster than their phones. I'd already be running. Yeah. Well, that's how they worked is the phone sent the, or the tip up transmitter sent the signal to the receiver and the receiver would transmit it to your phone. It shouldn't have taken five, 10 seconds. So, but uh, yeah, that's how it works anyways. And you will get a lot further distance with that receiver. But um, I keep looking over here cause I actually have my receiver sitting right here on the table next to me. Um, yeah, I, they're a good product. I mean, they, they serve the purpose, but they're they're not the beat all by any means i think you know they could improve their product a lot um little different technology something like that maybe rather than bluetooth or something would uh increase their product a lot i just lost five subs you don't mind helping me out i still have yet to send out the the Tip up for the winter too. I still have it right here. Um, my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I can't find a box. I got to get a box and I'll get that sent out here pretty soon. If uh, the winner is watching. You guys watching The Voice tonight? If, uh, I don't know, not all of you are from Wisconsin, I'm sure, but uh, watch The Voice and vote Chris Cruzy. That's what I'm going to do after the live stream here. 
think he's doing a Garth Brooks song tonight. Chris Cruz is actually, his hometown's like 10 miles from here. I know his hometown like I know the back of my hand. It's actually pretty cool. He's he's uh, in the top 10 now. It's like, a, you know, a few months ago, like his biggest gigs were, I mean, he plays overseas and stuff, but his biggest gigs were like Gilgans and Chitek. Um, he, uh, you know, just a bar. And now this past week, they just announced that he was going to be on the main stage at Country Jam for God knows how many people. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty, pretty proud of him. And he's also doing Aquafest. I think he's going to be playing at Country Jam like three times. Something, I mean, I don't know how far away all you guys are and everything. Uh, maybe I could make a post on my Facebook page, which also, the Facebook page is a dead zone. You guys got to get over there and check that out. Um, I think I've only got like less than 10 people on the Facebook page still. But um, maybe I'll post it on there, like to post where you're from. Me and some uh, buddies were thinking of like starting a, like a little ice fishing contest. We could do it just for fun or like have everybody buy in some point maybe I don't know if we'll do it this winter or maybe next winter or something we could do a like a, a ice fishing contest invite all you subscribers out there and um, find a spot to go and I don't know what uh, kind of contest it would be if it would just be like a big fish contest or certain categories or something like that do a buyout maybe even um, talk to some of the local uh, bait shops here and stuff see if they'll do uh, some prizes Jacob says he's an hour away from Lake Superior. Yeah, I'm like two hours south of there is where I'm at. New Richmond, that's not too far from me at all. Closer than Superior. I'm not sure how far New Richmond is away, but it's a little drive. Not too bad, though. Fish donkey, yeah. Never heard of that. Jacob says, yep, he's watching The Voice. Yeah, I'm getting pretty close to uh, my watch time hours on here on YouTube too. So, so that means I can make money on here, which will probably be like five cents. But if there's ever a day where you can actually make some money on here, which my, my channel will probably be shut down before I could ever make any good kind of money because there's so many people nowadays with so many feelings that Pretty soon, you know, in two, three, four years that people are going to consider ice fishing offensive, you know, and um, my channel will probably be demonetized and taken down, removed, you know, same with all the outdoor channels. So, uh, but anyhow, if I ever did make any money on here, we could make a, you know, I could get uh, better equipment and maybe some, somebody to run a camera for me would be nice. That, that's the main, that's the hardest thing about YouTubing is recording yourself do this stuff like I was out snow blowing and stuff today I'm like oh maybe that'd be a good idea but how the heck am I going to record myself uh snow blowing and doing all the yard maintenance after the snowfall we just had I'd like to have recorded it but it'd have been really hard maybe that's why everybody's leaving because I don't have all that fancy equipment you know which is fine 45 minutes not too bad yeah, that's pretty close. We could get together. G Y G U W E C. We could get together and do some fishing at some point this this year too. Let me know if you'd be interested. I'm always looking for people to fish with during the week. Like I said, I work weekends and I got off all week long. I mean, I got the kid, but I can get babysitters occasionally. ASAP fishing one. Hey man, I just dropped a new vid. Does that mean I get my shout out ASAP? Yep, anyhow, I got one more tip up here that I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to set up. I don't have my Arctic Fire on this one, I guess. Um, must be one of my broken ones. I'm getting a, a collection of them now. Obviously, my blue tips still work because I never use them anymore. Oh, that one's pretty dead, too. This lighthouse is, so I can fix that quick.
Yeah, I ordered six Arctic fires this morning. They're saying they're going to be here by like Friday. They're actually a pretty good deal. Normally, if you're in the stores, you can't find them hardly for under, a lot of times you can't find them for like under 12, 13 bucks. But uh, Farm and Fleet's got them on sale on their website anyways for $9.99. So I ordered six of those things today. Invested more money in lights. More money than I already have. My light, my lights on my uh, tip-ups are pretty overkill, but I like to see them from a long distance. That's not too bad at all. Yeah, yeah, they're a decent light. I mean, ten bucks. I mean, I mean, they're still seems a little bit much for what they are. I was researching all kinds of different new lights and stuff too, and I did find one. They're called, what was it? I think it's just Tip Up Light. Tipuplight.com. I think is where you can find them. And the light is spelled L-I-T-E, so tip up L I T E dot com. And I seen him, the guy also has them on uh, eBay. And he's got them in red, blue, and green. And they're super bright and they extend like this whole area here on the flag. Um so they gotta be like five, six inches long, and they're super bright, especially the blue ones. And uh, they're like seven dollars a piece, and then two dollars and two dollars or two dollars and fifty cents for shipping. But um, and it doesn't matter how many you ordered; it was standard two dollars and fifty cents for shipping. So you could order a hundred of them and get them for that. But um, yeah, he was all sold out of the blue and red ones. That's what I wanted was a blue one. And uh, all he had was green left, so I didn't order any of them. I should have though. I should have just ordered green ones or just waited until they were back in stock. Um, I seen the guy also was selling them on Craigslist. That's actually how I found out. My buddy told me about them. I'm trying to decide if I should get more blue tips or frable ones for my daughter now she's old enough. Um, I mean, I don't have one that's working here other than these ones. If you're looking for a light aspect, I mean, you be the judge between the blue tips and the frable here. If you're looking for something to send it to you, if you, if you can't pay attention, obviously blue tips is the way to go. But um, there's also, if, as far as the blue tips go and what they do, there's also a lot better products for that. It just depends on how much you want to spend. So the blue tips do work, but not that great. So take that for what it is. Guy says he sees them on advertising on Facebook too. Beaver dams are expensive nowadays. Yeah, actually that uh, beaver dam I bought for the subscriber giveaway. I don't think I was finding anywhere that could sell them for less than $45. Everywhere I was looking, $45. I bought that one, whatever. And uh, then I was at the bait shop literally the day after and see they had them for $39.99, which is crazy because usually bait shops are a little more expensive than like Walmart or Farmer Fleet. So anyways, yeah, I got that one for $45 and that's, that's just the original, that's, you know, original beaver dam tip up. Well, hopefully I don't have any more dead lighthouses. This is the last tip up I'm going to go through tonight anyhow, but uh, hopefully I don't have any more dead lighthouses. I do have three more tip ups that I normally use. Where'd I put my screws? Anybody in the chat see where I set my screws? Not paying attention. I'm too busy. Oh, there they are. I found them. I should at least make them orange or something. See how big these screws are. They are tiny. Yeah, it's not going to focus. These lighthouse tip up lights though, these things are awesome. These are my favorite ones. They're a little they're a little pricey too, but these ones I actually feel are worth it. Um, these are like 17, 18 bucks. Depends on where you get them. I don't know if there's a lot of places you can buy them online. I'm sure you can though. Lighthouse tip up lights anyways. I'll show you again here how they work after I get this one put back together.
assuming I don't lose all the components here. And the, and the batteries do last a long time. Like I'm just replacing a lot of batteries and stuff here. But these, these batteries have been in here three, four years probably. And occasionally, you know, the light will get bumped on or something. Same with the Frables, the light will get bumped on. Or um, I have random people pulling tip-ups, you know, if I'm letting other people use my equipment and they forget to turn the lights off and they throw it in the box and I don't, it's running nonstop for a week or all summer or something. Yeah, Jacob says lighthouses are his favorite. Mine too. I'll show you how they work here anyways. Assuming this will turn on, it's got a brand new battery. Yep, super bright now. Anyhow, there's a light on each side of this uh, canister that sits on top of the T-bar here. So when the fish has it and they're running at night, you can see them run with it, you know. It's taking out line, you see them just barely spinning with it. Oh, a long ways away from a long distance, you can be like, oh, that's a walleye, or that's a northern. It's nice to see that you got a fish there anyways before you get to it. So, that's that. The line on here looks all good, for the most part. Alrighty, well anyhow, I'm going to be doing one of these live streams every week now. Every I'm going to probably do it every Monday night. I'll uh, create a vent for it on here, so you guys got a reminder every week. Um, I don't know what all we're going to be doing. We could just do some Q&As. If you guys got any questions, feel free to comment down below after I post this video. Uh, the video will re-upload onto YouTube, and then you can feel free to post all kinds of comments on there, all kinds of questions. Um, I'll try my best to answer them. I'm not an expert at anything, but I do know a little bit of stuff that I'd love to teach you guys if you guys ask the right question. Jacob says, I like the design. If you can tell it's a walleye, the walleye crawl. Yep, that's the main thing. Um, and you can see those from a long distance away too. The lights aren't nearly as big on each side as they are, like, are on the Frable. Not nearly, you know, whatever, not as big. But um, you can see them just as far too. They're... They're pretty great product. I really like them. So anyhow, I'm going to cut this off here. Uh, unless you guys got any quick questions for me. Not like anything new on here. Good luck fishing this weekend. Yeah, good luck to you guys too. Anybody that's going out. Um, good luck to you. Stay safe. Uh, use a spud bar if you don't have a ton of ice where you're at. Um, Safety is the main thing, but... Uh, Enjoy yourselves. Get out there and do some fishing. Let me know if uh, don't forget to like the uh, face Northwoods Wisconsin Facebook page. Let me know if you guys are catching anything. Um, there's a Facebook group too. You guys can post pictures, do all the things you want to. And don't forget to ask questions. We'll do maybe a Q and A next week. We can uh, do tip ups again. We'll find something to do in the live stream. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.